Dean of God. Siapa yang lulus di Laku? Profesor Dato' Sudramanya. Very competent and uh, acclaimed the mediators of national importance. Timothy Sushila and Kim Prasad Subhanna. Teaching faculty of the law school. My beloved participants of today's two-day function in India. Alternative dispute resolution mechanism. It's a mechanism provided under the law for resolution of disputes. Disputes are resolved as per the mechanism provided in the Code of Civil Procedure and the Code of Criminal Procedure. For civil cases, well laid down procedures are found in Code of Procedure. Code of Civil Procedure and for criminal cases, well laid down procedures are found in criminal procedure court. You know, I think some of you have seen how courts function. Have you gone to courts? Yes. Yes. Know how many of you have gone to court? <coughs> okay, 50% of the participants are peripherally aware, are aware of the peripheral uh, procedures adopted in the court for resolution of uh, disputes. See, in criminal procedure court, almost all cases are non comfortable <coughs> Those cases which are comfortable are found in section 320 of the criminal procedure court. If the accused wants the case to be compounded and consequently he shall be issued, he is to be acquitted. Section 320, part 1 and part 2, subsection 1 and subsection 2. Certain cases, certain criminal cases can be compromised with the permission of the court in certain cases even without the permission of the court. Section 320 elaborately discusses the cases, the specific cases under the IPC which can be compromised with the permission of the court and without the permission of the court. And similarly, Article 23 of CPC speaks about the manner in which a civil case can be compromised. So, if both the parties to the plaintiff and the defendant and our plaintiffs and defendants agree for a compromise, they will have to file separate compromise petition, the contents of which will be read over to the parties in the language known to them or will be interpreted to them if they do not know the language of the court. Then after being satisfied about the truthfulness of the compromise and the voluntary nature of the compromise, the court will put it see and thus it becomes a decree, a decree, executable decree, a decree which is equivalent to the decree given by a court after contest. You know how the case will be contested? A person comes to the court stating that the defendant has received 20,000 rupees from him agreeing to pay 15 percent interest per hour which will and he will have, he will put his case in the form of a plaint. And what are the contents of the claim? How a claim is to be drafted? Order 6, P, 6 and 7. How a defense is to be set up by a defendant is found in order 8 and it will file legal statement. If it doesn't admit it, it becomes a contentious issue. Contentious case and issues will be framed by the civil court for, dis for determination. Then parties will be asked to lead evidence. First, like will have to lead evidence. If he wants to read evidence before his party, his uh, witnesses are examined, he has to seek permission from the court. Similar is the case with the defendant. Defendant can exam, defendant has to examine himself first. And if he wants to examine anybody on his behalf as a witness, prior to this evidence, he has to file an application, seek permission from the court, and then only he can examine others. So when they know procedures are found, then evidence of evidence of both the parties are recorded. That you know, in the evidence examination in chief by the party who has called him, then cross examination by the opposite party, re examination if certain things need to be explained, and then elaborate evidence is recorded. Both documents, documents will also be produced, documentary evidence will be taken into consideration. There may be serious objection about the marking of the document on the basis of inadequacy of staff, 
non-registration and so on and so forth. Then after the closure of the evidence, so if there are contentions regarding the remarking of the document, the judge will have to say if this is this could be marked or not. If this could be marked, to what extent this could be looked into? Whether stamp, adequate stamp is paid on that document. If not, invoke the provisions of sections 33 and 34 of Stamp Act, Karnataka Stamp Act, collect it, and if it doesn't pay, send it to the registrar. And who will in turn collect it in terms of land revenue, as areas of land revenue? So after this elaborate exercise of recording evidence, marathon arguments will be advanced. Then the judge will reserve the case. One day the judgment will be pronounced. There are also restrictions about the days with which a judgment is to be pronounced. And if it is not possible, the judge will have to assign reasons as to why he could not dispose of the case within the particular period. So for everything there are procedures. You know, so everybody would like to take advantage of the procedures available in the code as a result of which the case gets prolonged. There is a serious criticism against the judiciary that there is inordinate delay disposal of cases, disposal of cases. People say, some people say that delay is delay in justice is denial of justice. Of course, there is another saying that justice should not be hurried. If justice is hurried, it is as good as hurried. Therefore, the judge will have to strike a balance between the two and take an appropriate decision. And that decision taken by the judge and which is made available to the parties by way of the judgment, that is always appealable. Appeal under section 96 of CPC to the first appellate court. If parties are agreed by any decision taken by the appellate court, a second appeal will be filed in terms of section 100 of CPC before the High Court, before the jurisdictional High Court. And after the outcome of the second appeal, parties may move the Supreme Court invoking Article 136 of the Constitution of India. If leave is granted and if it is admitted, it will be there for quite a long time. So you just look to the birth of a case, birth of a dispute in the trial court and its journey up to the Supreme Court and its disposal. Nearly 20 years, 25 years at times, even three decades might take, may take place. May take place. Similar, similarly, those cases which are not compoundable in criminal cases, they will have to be disposed of in accordance with law by a judgment only. But there are certain cases which can be compounded. As I have already told you, Section 320 speaks about the compounding of criminal cases in terms of subsection 1 and subsection 2 with the permission of the court, without the permission of the court. Certain special statutes provide for compounding of cases. They, though the parties did not invoke section 320. For example, negotiable instruments act. A has given a check in favor of B. The presumption, presumption is that A who has given check to B has received some consideration. Therefore, he has issued that check in partial discharge or in full discharge. There is a presumption under section 180 of the evidence act. Okay, let us assume that the check is not honored. Check is not honored because he has not kept sufficient funds in his account. A memo will be given by the collecting bank stating that there are no sufficient funds to answer this check. So soon after receipt of the same, within 30 days he has to issue a notice to the drawer of the check, calling upon him to pay the amount within 15 days of the date of the receipt of the check. Less he would be constrained to file a complaint in terms of section D of CRPC before the cost, before the jurisdictional court. And then if he doesn't pay, okay, even if he, even if the answer given to him is not sustainable or acceptable to the complaint, a complaint will be filed. Then on the basis of the complaint, cognizance will be taken, summons will be issued, the other party will come and other side as an accused. You know, the accused in such cases checkbox cases has to dispel the initial burden cast upon him in terms of section 118 and 139 of 38 of negotiable instruments act. 
Not only it is very difficult because no ministry has it is to be proved in such cases. You know our experience as judges in the trial court, as the appellate court, court judge and as the judge in the high court, cases are hotly contested. Such cases are hotly contested. They are contested as though they are murder cases. But procedure provided under the negotiable instrument tax is a summary procedure. It should be tried as a summons case. You know, summary procedure means the summary of the evidence given by the party will be recorded. Maximum one paragraph or two paragraphs. But in most of the cases, the cases are conducted as though they are warrant cases. Narrative form. And ultimately, in most of the cases, the accused are convicted, appeals are dismissed. They approach the High Court, they remain in the High Court for quite a long time by way of criminal remission petition. And ultimately, one day, they will also be dismissed. Because chances for accused succeeding in such cases are very difficult. Because it is, it is an appeal task to dispel the initial statutory burden found under Section 180 and 138 of uh, the Negotiable Instruments Act. Section 143 of the Negotiable Instrument Act mandates that in all cases filed for offences under Section 138, summary procedure shall be involved. If summary procedure is to be exempted and it is to be tried as a warrant case, the judge will have to, after hearing the parties, pass an order converting it into a warrant case and then allow the parties to have a detailed trial. Why I am bringing all these things to your mind is because of the procedure provided, detailed procedure, you can't find fault in the procedure found either in CPC or in CRC. They are all well laid down procedures, time tested procedures. They have been stood the rigor of the constitutional court. They have been considered to be constitutionally valid. So, therefore, the parties. The parties if they engage good advocates, knowledgeable advocates, very experienced advocates, they would like to make use of all the provisions so as to defend their particular respective clients. Because lawyers are there to tenaciously fight for their clients. Is it not? It is their duty, it is their profession, it is their cherished profession. And they act according to the norms of the Bar Council of India and the Advocates Act. So they are entitled to defend their clients tenaciously. So I will consume. Now the question is whether all the cases which come to courts necessarily require a resolution of dispute only by application of the procedures found in CRPC and CPC. What is it? Should they be should 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 each case undergo this rigorous exercise of the application of the provisions of CPC and CRPC. You, you may not be able to sustain as to how you justify the answer, no, but you, you are from the bottom of the heart you feel that these all these cases are not cases which necessarily to be disposed dispose of in accordance with law that too as to the provisions of CRPC and CPC. Lot of cases are there. Just, I will give you an example. There is a partition suit. Younger brother files a suit against elder brother. Or elder brother, sorry, elder brother files a suit against elder brother for partition and separation of ancestral properties. There is, let us also assume that there, that there is no dispute or contest about the properties being ancestral. All the parties are before the court, necessary parties. If father is dead or if mother is dead, she will also be made a party. If there are sisters, they will also be made as parties. So all necessary parties are before the court. There is no dispute about the properties being ancestral. Then the, the, the only, uh, and if there, there may be some parties who have already admitted the case of the claim by way of filing written statement. So they will be virtually saving the claim. One or two may be contested. They will file written statement. Okay, on the basis of the same issues will be So 
If all the parties to a partition suit are there before the court, and if there is no dispute about the property is being ancestral, the the uh, role of the judge is very very minimal. Apply the personal law of the parties in the succession act. If it is a, if judge of one of the co-partners has taken place after 9/9/2005. A daughter is also entitled to equal share along with her half brother. Apply the law. Decide it by the preliminary date. And if parties have some grievance in regard to the, say, uh, which portion of the property to be allowed, allow them to be fight and out in the final detail. So, there is nothing. But still, there are cases of this type lingering in the court for several years, the first court itself. That he gets court itself. So, if A who has filed suit for partition and separate possession against his brother or brothers, hmm? let us assume that P and C, A is the very poor man living in the village. P and C are quite well off. They are educated. They are employed. Even though they are employed, even though they are educated out of the funds generated from the ancestors. Properties, this brother cannot make a claim against daily income from profession or job. So, even though the blind man who is who has not studied well, who is living in village himself, who is looking after the entire family affairs, will be entitled to only for his share. Though morally he needs a more a, a, a greater share than the dependents who are well placed in their life. Law is blind. It says if there are three brothers and the, if there are uh, no sisters, one over three, one over three, one over three. So if six acres of land, you get only two acres of land, he is entirely dependent upon the agriculture, he is already married, he has two daughters, one of daughters, these two people are well placed in life. Well educated, one is a senior executive, another is a senior officer in the central government, is drawing more of them, drawing empty salaries. They have their own good house of built in cities. But what happened? So should this be, should this be this court of therefore in terms of law only? No. Somehow we should persuade the parties. We should tell the difference. No, here is the brother who is entirely dependent upon agriculture. He is living in his village. He has no other avenues of income. He has a lot of responsibilities. He has to educate his two children and uh, perform their marriage at the early age. Otherwise, he could be very difficult. Somehow, pursue the parties to enter into a compromise. And thereby, this poor man who is entirely dependent upon more and then live in normal life, though not a life befitting of his brothers, at least a normal life. How to do it? Law doesn't provide, law provides only for mantra, mantra, mantra. Is it not? So even uh, the judge need not dispose of that case, even that stenographer or bench clerk who has little uh, well read can say, oh, according to section 6a, which has come into effect from 9 which is also interpreted by the Supreme Court uh, in Pulavati's case, she will, uh, these people are entitled to what is there? So, these types of cases which need to be disposed of by persuading the parties for entering into an amicable settlement have been pending for quite a long time. There are cases which need to, which necessarily require the attention of the court, the application of all the provisions the respective courts and other substantive laws for disposal of the case, but have, has the judiciary been able to dispose of those cases time, within a time frame? No. For example, this negotiable instruments act which speaks about uh, the disposal of complaints under section 138 states that all efforts must be made to dispose of the case within six months from the date of taking up office. But in our experience, our experience tells us that most of the cases 
take a lot of time, two years, three years, the cutting edge court itself. Upper court, two years, five years, then high court, five years. So, an ordinary check bones case, its journeys up to high court would be ten years. Is it just All right, you know. Now, earlier days, the monetary transactions, that is, advancing of loans, was through on demand promissory notes, registered simple mortgages. If I wanted some money earlier, I should have mortgage in my property without handing over the position. That is called a simple mortgage. It should be registered. Then there will be a company. I am receiving so much amount and so and so. I have a mortgage in my property. I will be liable to pay interest at 12% per annum on the amount received. So 12 years is limited. A simple one. Uh, similarly, on demand promises are not taken into consideration. It is three years with the data. It is taken into account. Should should be five. Now, those the method of advancing loan by executing the uh, by means of uh, on demand promises, you know, simple registered markets they are over. They are actually extinct. You don't find it now. Now, people avail the. By executing checks, if I want ten thousand rupees, and if you are ready to pay to me, you will insist. You give me a check in my favor. So if I give a check in your favor, there is a presumption that I have received the amount found in the check as a consideration, and for having received the same, I have issued a check. I have withdrawn it. You have withdrawn it. So three months is the time for the presentation of check. You will present the check. The check will be returned by itself. A memo will be issued to the bank. You will issue a notice and then by a company. So almost all the loan transactions are happening through checks only. So therefore, courts are to overburdened with the, these negotiable acts. These cases by Parliament's traditional system, one thirty-eight of negotiable instrument. I am sure you understand about. Uh, the, uh,
So there are cases, for example, petitions under Section 34 of Occupation and Conciliation Act. An occupant tribunal has disposed of a case by an award. They considered award. And that is subject by the Section 34. There are parameters for disposal of the same. But the, the, the question is whether the award is opposed to public policy of India. So the gentleman have to make the, an honest effort to find out as to whether the award is opposed to the principles of public policy of India. There are certain cases, for example, about Manmuke, suits by the representative capacity. I find this way. I have a community of interest. I, on behalf of my other persons who have similar interest, then there may be hundreds of persons. It is not practically possible to bring all the 100, 200, and 300 persons as plaintiff. I will espouse my cause along with those who have a similar cause. There are cases which need to be disposed of by courts after applying all the uh, all the provisions of the law. Similarly, for example, cases pertaining to mentally challenged persons, mentally ill persons, <coughs> minors, babies, they need to be disposed of by court. For example, section 92 of CPC, public charity suit. They need to be, because the court is, district court has to go into as to whether there is any uh, criticism public in nature. So, these are some cases. For example, in the cases, murder case, attempt to murder case, then uh, dacoity, robbery, serious offenses against the state, so uh, offenses against the women, offenses against children, offenses against the children, caused in the children, crime, serious offenses, economic offenses, serious offenses related to corruption, they need to be tried in accordance with the provisions of their respective uh, substantive law as also criminal procedure. If those cases which could be otherwise disposed of by the consent of the parties are settled by way of persuasion, then court will have sufficient time to apply its mind to the other cases and take an appropriate decision and even lay down the law. Because even the courts in the country can, can lay down the law. If, they, if a particular trial court takes a decision and it is available, and for the first time by the High Court of a similar nature, it becomes the law. Therefore, we call it, we call such an effort as sui generis. Sui generis. Friends, therefore, in the year 1976, an amendment was made to the provisions of uh, the Civil Procedure Court, the Civil Procedure Court. Article 32, Article 32 of Civil Procedure Court was amended in the year 1976 by insertion of capital A, 32A. Many of us, even judges and judges, most of the judges, probably, they have not adverted their mind to this aspect. Order 32A is a very, very serious provision in CPC. It states that the court dealing with family matters shall make all honest efforts for Conciliation between the parties. Conciliation between the parties. What are those family matters? So, matters connected with within the family. Partition suits, then suits challenging adoption, suits related to maintenance, petitions for custody of children, petitions for divorce, petition for restitution of conjugal rights. All the matters connected with the matrimony. So, irrespective of the religion. Irrespective of the religion. And there is also a mandate for the court to make such conciliation in the chambers. So that it's a family matter. No other party should come to know it. Therefore, parties will be requested to come to the chamber. The they will be. Uh, the judge will have to speak to them very gently, try to persuade them, not only persuade them, as our esteemed uh, uh, mediators do, the, the court in its process of persuading the parties can push them to logical end and suggest some settlements also. Conciliation, the difference between conciliation and mediation is very settled. A conciliator and the mediator for all practical purposes. 
all principles of mediations are applicable, but at the last, if it comes that somehow this case needs to be, uh, say, compromised, we can push the parties to, a, to an appropriate settlement and even, even suggest some terms of settlement also. And in this process, you can take the assistance of experts, family experts, psychiatrists, psychologists, family psychologists. Some folk, you can take, and if you feel that persons unconnected with the family can help for a settlement, you can rope with them also for a settlement. But unfortunately, I tell you, as a judge who had practiced for about 20 years, this was not very effectively implemented. Not very effectively implemented. Therefore, when uh, uh, it was thought to bring, uh, 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 thought to amend code of civil procedure drastically, the parliamentarians thought that there must be a provision for alternative dispute resolution. Therefore, section 89 was reintroduced. Reintroduced with effect from 172002. It provides a core mechanism. Mediation, arbitration, conciliation, judicial settlement, inclusive of local law. These are the four modes of settlement. I do not want to go touch mediation. Both the esteemed and the client the mediators have adverted to all the nuances of mediation. According to me, I can only sum up the process of mediation. It is the most effective, appropriate procedure wherever, wherever an element of relationship is involved. Mediation is the best. And according to me, the only measure by which parties can have a netherly or permanent settlement. For example, the husband files a petition against wife, or vice versa, or a father files a petition against his wife for custody of children, or married wife files a petition for maintenance. But then it will be settled by the courts of parties to pursue it to enter into compromise because the relationship is very important. We may give you as judges after a year after recording the evidence, lengthy evidence and hearing the elaborate documents, we give a judgment, a refuse judgment. It may be very soft in terms of uh, law, in terms of procedure, in terms of language in terms of texture, but it is only one party is satisfied, other party is not satisfied. And there is a scope for appeal, review, revision. So where is the entrance? Okay. By the time a husband wants divorce, but a, 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 a petition for divorce is disposed of, probably he, he may not think of Pursuing it because he, he may have crossed at that age. <coughs> These are things. And if a petition filed for the custody of children uh, is not disposed of within a reasonable time, they may become enemies. It becomes a process. Therefore, mediation, for example, a landlord and tenant. Let us assume a tenant has been, A is a tenant of B's house. 25 years. He was married there, he had two children, both the children are, uh, uh, have studied, and uh, the owner wants the demise from his back. Why? It's a petition. It goes on, lingers for several years. He is in urgent need. He, he had leased out this property to be when he was in government service. He has got to retire. Section 30 and 31 of the Karnat Current Provides within six months the petition must be disposed of. If he just produces 
retirement certificate, that is there is the matter, there is a presumption. But you, you have to see cases being disposed of by, by retired employees within this time stipulated by the provisions of the current current act. No. If it is disposed of within one year, it is as good as disposing of within one month from the data, the final information. These are not things. Because there is an element of security. They were, they were in a poor home. They were in good terms. As a result of which, the tenant is there for 25 years. He was married there, he had children, he, he grew well. In all ways of life. But now he wants to practice. So, what I was doing, I was telling you, I was in this. Just the day before yesterday, I was, two days ago, I was in Udupi. The Udupi Bar Association had called me for some address in the advocates on some issues. One advocate came to me. Sir, when you were the principal district that here, you had organized local work in a very, very meaningful way. Sir, you used to tell the uh, NX, pursue the NX. What is it? Sir, I, I will get you some time, don't worry. I will pursue the owner uh, to give some reason for time. But should you not think of having your own in the house? Do you want to link around to the same house of which you are not the owner? Don't you want to become the owner? of a house. Do you want to continue as a tenant? Should your children live in the same tenant and house? So these things, these considerations made the parties to breathe in as a result of these several petitions for this portal. I never understood the effect of such words, but those words had a lot of effect and at that same advocate who was appearing in many other local government cases just reminded me of these words and I thought, oh, I don't, I did not know the effect of those words. So, persuading a tenant who is pitted against the landlord to think of having a house of his own and lingering on the house, to the house of uh, his, his owner would be a very, very uh, important point for the tenant. So, somehow, it would, then it would not be very difficult to persuade the party to enter into some compromise if the owner is only ready only to give six months and if he wants two years. So somehow some bridge could be uh, some, some gap could be bridge and matter could be disposed. So such cases do not require resolution in accordance with law after recording evidence, hearing, arguments and everything. Very, very easy cases because the relationship of 25 years, they were good. The children of the landlord and the children of uh, uh, the tenant grew up together. They played. They were the same age. But for this is true. They do not see eye to eye. So, okay, it's better. It's, they, they, are not, they were not able to solve the matter before coming to the court. Therefore, they came to the court. But judge owes a responsibility to create a country for the parties to enter into a compromise. So, this, the, the three four modes of compromise, especially mediation, conciliation, and local law, they are very, very effective tools. So, far as our question is concerned, Then, so far as arbitration is concerned, what happens? There will be an agreement between the parties for such a transaction. In that agreement, there will be a specific clause. What it speaks about resolution of dispute only through the provisions of arbitration law, arbitration act. Now you know arbitration act of 1940 is repealed. 1996 act has act has come to force. It was amended drastically on 23 and 2019, 2015, and again 2019 amended. So that the arbitration law will be applicable to the parties. So arbitration means one party, the moment a dispute arises, the party will propose somebody as an artist's arbitrator. The other side may accept it, and if it disputes it, the matter will go to High Court under Section 11 of Arbitration and Conciliation Act, where an arbitrator will be appointed on the judicial side by the High Court, and that arbitrator will decide. In the Arbitration and Conciliation Act, 
these uh, rig parole provisions of CPCC are to say are not applicable. Parties can have their own procedure. And if they try to uh, have an agreement about the procedure to be adopted for disposal of the case, the arbitrator is free in accordance with law to go on with the case. And when a layman could be an arbitrator, an engineer could be an arbitrator, an or a chartered accountant could be an arbitrator, an advocate could be an arbitrator. So arbitrate between the parties and he will give a Navar. So that Navar is as good as a decree drawn by a civil court. It is executable. Within 90 days from the date of passing of the Navar service of Navar, it should be challenged before the jurisdiction and district court in terms of section 34. So the grounds available for challenging the award are very limited. An award to be challenged only if it is opposed to the public policy of India. Otherwise, no. Then, courts will also not interfere with the view taken by the arbitrator. There may be, the arbitrators may be trying to share me, may not be trying to share mind also. But court does not make any difference between a trying to share mind and a not trying to share mind. The award is not opposed to public policy, it will come back. Then the party will have to approve the High Court in terms of section 37. Mm -hmm. This is a second appeal. A lot of cases are pending before the High Court. I was also a judge. I, I could see many, many awards involving cross of cases are pending. Now they will be transferred under the provisions of commercial courts act to commercial benches dealing with those cases. Okay. There, so one more law has come. Therefore, if arbitration is resorted to between the parties, it, it, it is taken out of the ambit of this civil court. The moment the case is referred to an arbitrator, the arbitrator is seized on the matter. But one advantage, one uh, drastic amendment that was brought in terms of Section 18 was even pending civil cases, then the parties had not agreed for any compromise and the parties had persuaded to resort to arbitration from that point of time the provisions of the Arbitration and Conciliation Act would be applicable. That was a, there is a super uh, specific performance between the parties. A has made a super specific performance on the basis of contract which is opposed by the other party and somehow the parties during the course of uh, the submission of uh, the case before the court, they accept for resolution of this group arbitration, it is taken out of the court, civil court. Civil court does not have any, will not have any jurisdiction the moment it is referred. The moment it is referred. So, arbitration is one mode which is available for regular hierarchy of courts. If parties agree with parties want to challenge. But so far as the other three are concerned, mediation, conciliation, and judicial settlement includes one another. For mediation, there is no separate law except the statutory vacuum found under section 89. On the basis of section 89, all states, each state has, all states are made, have formulated their own mediation procedure rules. Karnataka state has also mediation procedure rules of 2005 which has come into effect of 2006. How a case is to be referred, civil case is to be referred to the court for the mediation. What, are, what is the role of mediation? How long can mediation take place? Normal, normally 60 days. If they want some extension, they can request the court and the court will grant it. Now we grant extension. They will not reject So, if parties ultimately enter into a compromise, it is as good as a compromise under Order 23 Rule 1 of CPC. It becomes very good when the court accepts the same. So, if the parties enter into a compromise, the mediators will prepare the compromise petition. It has to be in accordance with the provisions of law. It must not be opposed to public policy. It must be voluntary one. Then the matter will go back to the court. Where the compromise contents, the compromise petition will once again read over to the parties. 
Both the of the parties accepting the contents of the compromise and the court being satisfied about its legality and voluntariness puts its seal and then it becomes a decree. Till then, it doesn't become a decree. That means court still has the power until it is accepted in accordance with the provisions of Article 23 Rule No. 1. So far as conciliation is concerned, it has to be back in, in accordance with the provisions of Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 as amended from time to time. So I have already told you about the subtle difference between mediation and conciliation. A conciliator is a mediator for all practical purposes with the two exceptions. One exception is he can even propose terms of settlement and push the parties for a settlement. But mediation, mediation they don't do. They will only encourage parties to generate option by themselves. So parties will have to generate option by themselves and the mediators will help them in choosing the best option for settlement of their data. Then comes the local law. Local law is a Janata Nyaya. We call it as Janata Nyaya. That is an open court. It's an open, it's just an open court. So all civil cases are fit to be settled in local law. Normally, civil cases in which no personal uh, relationship is involved, only such cases will be referred to local law. For example, check homes cases. Though they are not civil cases, they are quasi civil and criminal, but still compoundable in terms of section 1.1. They can be referred to local law. All civil cases, barring certain cases as I told, this uh, uh, letters of administration, succession certificate, and uh, probate, such matters, and their uh, protection of minors, mentally ill person, deities, they and bar one to be in a protective capacity. Barring those cases, all types of civil cases uh, can be referred to local. There will be a judicial consideration, either a sitting judge of the court or a retired of the court, and usually one advocate or any person who has uh, uh, done good social service or good social background. So these two persons will speak to the parties and try to persuade the parties, and the moment they accept it, then a war will be passed by the local order. And that the war will not go to court once again for its approval. It is a decree for all practical purposes. It is an award given by the local dollar, which has all the trappings of a regular decree drawn by a competent court of civil jurisdiction. It is neither appealable nor revisable. So, in terms of arbitration, conciliation, in terms of conciliation, mediation, and local dollar, Karnataka 75% of court fee will be refunded. And precious time of the parties, precious time of the courts will be saved. And there will be permanent settlement. Parties may come back once again to the same court, their relationship will be restored. At least there will be a guarantee. There is no further deterioration of their relationship. No appeal, no revision, no review. So this local law is a is a mechanism of under the Legal Services Authorities Act, 1987. It's a very it's a it's a legislation passed by the Parliament by both the houses of the Parliament. I don't think that this type of the law is found elsewhere in the world. I have not come across such type of uh, the mechanism, such type of mechanism through which uh, cases could be resolved. According to me, the word resolution is apt to be found only if a case is decided by applying all the provisions of law that to after recording the evidence. But if a case is decided, either in mediation or in conciliation or in local level, it is not just resolution, it is a dissolution of the dispute itself. Dissolve 
discourse will be dissolved. Therefore, our parliament has thought fit to introduce a novel mechanism by way of section 89 of the Code of Civil Procedure, which has come into effect from 17 2002. The radical, the aggressive reforms made to Code of Civil Procedure were tested before the Supreme Court. In the Zero Bar Association case twice in 2003 and 2005, the bench considered the three out of the judges of the Supreme Court as well. But all the provisions are constitutionally valid. Constitutionally valid. But still, I tell you, our experience is that because I joined the judiciary in 1986 as a district I had worked virtually as a trial court judge in Bangalore. I was seeing, but in spite of this, 2002, it was not effectively implemented until a decision was rendered by the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Opcon Infrastructure. It is reported in 2010. 2010 bracket 8 ACC. Please, 2010 bracket 8 SCC. Supreme Court civil cases, Supreme Court cases, page 24, page 24, have no infrastructure. It's one of the uh, eloquent judgments of the Supreme Court, which gave a gentle nudge to the whole process of alternative dispute resolution. It was decided in 2010 that almost eight years had elapsed, still the provision of section 89 had not been implemented in its letter and spirit. There were valid reasons also. There were valid reasons. Because if you read in section 89 and the result in the implementation part, application part in order 10 to 18 to 1c, there are uh, apparent inconsistencies. Section 89 speaks of the mechanism. How to obtain this found in order 10 to 1 to But in section 2089, the word auxiliary word may be used. In order 10 to 1 the auxiliary word shall be used. So if may is taken into consideration, it is the judge has a liberty to persuade the parties to apply one of the four modes. Whereas Consequential application part found in Article 10 Rule 1 would mandate the judge that he must persuade the parties to opt one of the four methods of alternative dispute resolution. This has been very eloquently uh, looked into and a balance is struck by one of our finest students of the Supreme Court, Honorable Mr. Justice Rabin. He has, in fact, he had no, he, he, in fact, he created, he, he made use of the opportunity uh, to lay down a law and it has, and it has now a binding precedent to be followed by all courts and authorities in terms of Article 141 of the Constitution. It is a law laid down by the court because the, the inconsistencies found in these two provisions are very, very uh, neatly fine-tuned and said and ultimately held that the judges have a duty to persuade the parties before it to opt for one of the four methods of uh, the alternative dispute resolution mechanism. And what are the normal cases, what are the normal cases which are unfit to be settled uh, by media and which are the best cases to be settled are also found in, in, in that judgment. I request to all of you is you have come to this uh, uh, conference, uh, you will be falling sharp if you don't read that day. Not read that day if you don't study that day. You have to make it a part and I request the authorities to provide this copy of the judgment to all of you. I think this, you see, this has turned the whole uh, tide of the idea. Tide of the whole tide of the idea. Right? Now, courts are now very, very proactive. They are trying to refer the matters uh, depending upon the nature of the case to mediation, local arbitration 
is not usually sought. Arbitration is it will be the best uh, uh, remedy only when it pertains to some business contracts or contracts of huge nature. There are many, many intricacies will have been decided by some experts also. It's not procedure, this arbitration. For example, huge business transactions, huge contracts, infrastructure. In such matters, it would be the most appropriate uh, uh, mode. In all other cases, uh, the other three remain are very good. And please see, this legal services of the act provides for disposal of all compoundable criminal cases in local See, the beauty is in local, let us assume, there are two parties. One party wants the man to be referred to local. The other party states, no, sir, this shall not be referred. He states, no, no, sir. He doesn't consent. But still, if the judge comes to the conclusion that this is a case fit to be tried by the local Allah, he can pass a detailed order, he can pass a considered order, and then read the local That's the beauty of the section 19 of Legal Services and Authorities Act, which uh, enables the authorities or the committees under the Act to refer the matters to local law. Friends, you know, it is said in your international disputes are being referred to mediation. In mediation, you know, what parties do? The mediator will allow the parties to sit across the table and make them prove, speak to each other. They will not have spoken to each other for quite a long time. So they will create a very congenial atmosphere for both of them to talk to them. And the moment one speaks some, the bed comes down. The, the pent up feelings come down because there is a bed. And 50% of the mediation process is over. Because the mediator is a patient listener. He is a disinterested, he or she is a disinterested person. He or she is interested in appropriate settlement to the parties. And to see that parties do not fight once again. You know, see, alternative dispute resolution mechanism, though the word alternative is used, in strict sense so, it is not alternative to the existing judicial set, judicial process which settles the matter. It is, in fact, supplemental to the existing judicial system. Very, very important is alternative dispute resolution mechanism as contemplated under section 89 of the CPC and also in terms of section 19 of the Legal Services of Act is is supplemental to the existing judicial settlement and therefore courts have a greater role to play. When judges have a greater role to play, lawyers have a greater role to play. Because unless the lawyers are persuaded, they don't uh, advise their clients. Otherwise clients mistake them. So court, the judge has to tell sir, parties and their lawyers. Sir, as per section 89, and more particularly in the right of the law, laid down by the Honorable Supreme Court in the Afghan infrastructure case, I have a duty to persuade you to act for one of the boards of settlement. According to me, this type of settlement, this type of case is best to be, is better to be decided by this board. Then the mediation or settlement, or mediation or conciliation or local or the Then I must persuade these parties, lawyers. Now, the uh, uh, Karnataka uh, alternative dispute, this is uh, uh, subordinate court rules, it has been amended. Now, one of the steps to be taken by the judge after the completion of the pleadings is to find out whether there are chances of settlement under section 89. Now, there is a mandate. Otherwise, earlier, soon after the completion of the pleadings, Civil courts used to frame issues and then post the case for evidence. No. Now, soon after the completion of the pleadings, the parties and their advocates, advocates must be called and the parties must be made available in the court, but they must be present and all honest efforts must be made by the court. And in spite, and in spite of the best efforts, 
if he is unable, if he or she is unable, it is a different matter. But somehow persuade the parties to offer one of them. I think mean, even after referring the matter, it is not simple. Any court doors are open because the court which has referred the matter has control over it and will come back and you will be able to decide it in accordance with the law. Except arbitration. Because once a reference is made to arbitration, then the court loses its hold over it. And that is a different case. Therefore, I am very happy that uh, the uh, law university has prescribed 100 marks for alternative dispute resolution. And I think uh, our uh, professor uh, Subramanian has the best chance that he introduced this subject. Uh, in fact, this is a subject which uh, needs a lot of attention. And you can understand the dynamics of uh, Section 89 only if you go to court and uh, the allied institutions which are step in aid of the uh, initiatives under Section 89 like the Bangalore Mediation Center, Arbitration Center, and uh, the local laws that will be organized very now and then by the District Legal Services Authority, Bank. These are very interesting matters. And uh, see, we need not persuade the parties the moment uh, uh, they, uh, they complete the meetings. They may require some time to think over also. But all honest efforts must be made by the courts to persuade the parties to offer money for both courts of the alternative dispute resolution mechanism and thus bring down the pressure on the court. There are a lot of cases which need to be decided. It is not as though the courts are reluctant to dispose of these cases. The courts are ready to dispose of whatever cases they are filed, whatever cases which are filed before them. But certain cases which can be disposed of with the consent of the parties, precious time of the parties, educates the courts is saved and thus a new dimension is given to the resolution of uh, the disputes. And once these matters are settled, there will be a permanent settlement, uh, there will be no uh, hegemony between the parties further, and if possible, there are chances of uh, the relationship being uh, restored. This is how I view Section 89, and I'm very uh, happy uh, that uh, youngsters like you have uh, evinced a lot of interest in understanding the nuances of Section 89. There are audio trips. You may be very you may be surprised to know from me and from the esteemed uh, arbitrator um, mediators here yeah, that in the United States of America and some other Western countries, it is the mediators who are in great demand and more fees will be paid to them than regular mediators because they are experts in it, uh, mediation and they give best results to uh, the parties who approach them. And, uh, they go to courts, they take up cases and they make their uh, uh, best to see their parties somehow resolve them. These two can enter into a compromise. Uh, you are all uh, putting the students of law and very soon few of you may become advocates and few of you may become judges also because you need not practice. You can just walk into the court after a successful examination also.
just because there is a there a dispute is settled and a judgment is provided, and if that judgment is obtained by suppression of material fact, because suppression of uh, material facts destroys the whole judicial system. Therefore, such uh, inmate bill is a lot of inmate bill has in CPC or CRPC. Let those go. Should not, not be 
they have only in some cases in small cloud cloud modes only one jet will be available. That will be difficult, no problem. But that day no, the jet yes, but it's also difficult because he has to dispassionate. Even though parties have written many things in local alert, he must not keep those things in mind when he dispose of the case of merits after the matter that would be sent back. It's a very sensitive exercise. Therefore, we have always advised to have some change as a judicial conciliator, but then not expert. When the case is embossed in a mediation, and the mediator knows the party, one of the party personally, and... No, no, mediator may know the party personally, but should not have any interest in the party. So you will be knowing for various reasons. For example, let us assume, let us assume that we are good singer. Uh, every now and then uh, she will be giving the uh, program, the mediator will also be going there and she will also listen and probably he or she might have come into contact with them, spoken to them, but no special interest must be there. Suppose an advocate as a trained mediator, some of, uh, uh, at some point of time they have given some opinion in his favor, but they are very different. He or she will be the same. If the other part objects, they don't, they say, okay, you can have any other media. We will not. Because confidentiality, because the parties must have a lot of confidence. Confidentiality is the basis for the mediator to proceed. <coughs> At times, the judgments of the arbitrator 
was about criticized in the international level. I am not speaking of the municipal law or the state law, speaking of the international level. They were criticized for the simple reason. Our creators are essentially compromisers. And since they are compromisers, they are sent to the negotiating table only to compromise the issues and bring harmony between the parties and settle the disputes. There was a great arbitrator by the name John Bessett Moore. John Bessett Moore, a scholar who wrote the history of American arbitration in a few volumes. And this gentleman questioned the veracity of the statement saying that arbitrators are compromisers. He just negated and said, arbitrators at no point of time cannot become compromisers. Basically, they have to function within the bounds of law. They have to function under the Arbitration Act. They have to function under the mutual settlement related to arbitration. They are not supposed to deviate from the issues that they need right now. And the second important thing which was pointed by this is John as a more happened to be. Remember, arbitrators essentially are appointed in a particular case because of their competence and scholarship. And since their competence is being appreciated, applauded, admired, and liked by everyone, they are in the position and they take the position as arbitrators. In circumstances such as this, how can I say they are compromisers? If that is the situation at the international level, the same situation even at the national level, even in the state of Karnataka. So the very purpose of the, the what we call as mediation, negotiation, conciliation, conciliation, arbitration, and the last mode is judicial settlement. Now judicial settlement, because the judiciary involves the population and the disputes between the population. Remember, it's not in a position to resolve and to solve. In such situations, you should have alternative disputes supplementary mechanism. But it is only supplementary. You see, the Honorable Judge, he has insisted and repeatedly said, not less than three times. Don't be under the impression that the, the mediation process or the arbitration process is just an additional. No, it is supplementary. It's true that disputes are resolved. And remember, the very objective society, the purpose of establishing society, in the legal order, they say peace is very much essential. Restoration of peace, remember, under no circumstances should be allowed to be escalated. So in such situations, how do you resolve the disputes? And disputes have to be resolved within the process of law. That is why he was insisting, saying, you take the Legal Service Authority Act. You have a province that is being determined. And then you have Arbitration Act, that also the province is being determined. And in mediation, remember, both the parties should agree. And there are first the compromise. Formula has to be taken through the court of law. Having taken through the court of law, it has to be endorsed by the court. Then only when they will get the ethics, the seal of the court, it becomes a judgment binding of the parties. It is not a casual thing. Don't get to the impression mediation means just you talk and afterwards exchange and shake hands and go. That is not possible. And for everything, a rule of law, a procedure that is being established. It has to be remembered. It cannot be compromised under any circumstances. I simply thank the Honorable Judge for having accepted our invitation, for being with us, and given an enlightened talk for one hour or more. Remember, he is the best person, well suited to as far as procedural law is concerned. Remember, all the cases are at the tip of the tongue. He can quote and can correct you. That is why we bring such people so that you get enlightened how the judge should be. Instead, how not the judge should be. So that is why, remember, we undertake this type of effort so that when you go complete your course, you know a bit of remediation, if not the complete kick of it. But then, when you wear the black coat, naturally you will learn the kick of it. I have to thank uh, Mayor Madam Sushila Sarathi, but for her effort, this would not have taken place. Once again, a big applause. Mr. Sarathi has been 
remember in this intermediation of intermediation provides plenty of food for five years. So is the case with the Prasasuna. Remember there are three people, master trainers, they have undergone the rigor as well as when they come, they speak sense so that everyone understands and they are so free and ask questions and get enlightened and get corrected. Sir, on behalf of the CMR group of institutions and on behalf of the CMR group of